Uh, thanks very much, John. I was asking John before we started, uh, were we going to do this sort of traditional way in which the narrative of these things develops, where um, journalists say, first of all, the tools are fantastic, technology has liberated us, we're speaking to our audiences in ways we've never done before and told stories in all kinds of fantastic ways, but we can't make a living anymore and it's a disaster, what are we going to do? And so that is essentially uh, what I'm going to talk about for the next eight minutes as well. I thought James's um, um, presentation was really interesting and there was a lot of rich material in there and deep, you know, deep digging and, and deep analysis. I did kind of ask myself a question though about whether he was setting up a bit of a straw man with all these Pollyannas in the, you know, in the middle of the 1990s who were proclaiming that the internet was going to bring a new era of kind of the age of Aquarius and peace, love and understanding across the globe and everybody would have equal access and we'd all understand each other and go traipsing through the meadows. I mean, that, would, that was never my... Uh, my, my prediction in terms of this, um, in fact, I, you know, I work in an industry where the analysis of what's happening driven by technology is much more Cassandra than Pollyanna in that, uh, as everybody knows, the industry is under huge pressure, revenues are declining, um, circulation is declining, but probably more immediately in terms of revenues, what's more significant is the, is the disappearance of advertising like snow on a summer, summer's day and what that means for the quality of journalism which has been referred to by previous speakers already. But I wanted to focus in just a little bit, partly because of what, what James had to say about what can be a real problem, I think, which is this. People keep looking for binary opposites in, 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 this, in this debate. So uh, there's been a lot of rubbish, frankly, talked about new media versus old media over the, um, over the last few weeks. Um, uh, there is a kind of a, there is a sort of philosophy which says that everything that's happening is terrific and there's a philosophy that says that everything's happening is a disaster. The reality, of course, is much more complex than either of those black or white depictions uh, allows for. There's also, um, I mean, I was very happy to hear James's point about the kind of the, the Freemasonry of jargon which exists around, you know, uh, technology and business and media and all these, you know, acronym spaghetti soup that we all have to deal with on a regular basis. And, I mean, just in relation to that, I think the phrase citizen journalism, in my opinion, is kind of disappearing into the wormhole of history along with virtual reality and information superhighway and all those kind of ones. And I think we can move on from citizen journalism as a, as a phrase which might have been useful a few years ago but is not so relevant now. But um, I suppose from, from my perspective really, um, just to say briefly in my allotted eight minutes or maybe even, even seven minutes, my background, my introduction to this is, is my background is as a print journalist, uh, as, a, as a feature writer, film critic and, and editor in the Irish Times of, of supplements and of departments and came to um, digital quite late in the day, um, about four years ago now. Um, it was Joe Breen who's sitting here beside me. It's all his fault. He put the Irish Times on the web and destroyed our business model 15 years, <laughs> years ago now. So you know, he, he, he can tell you about that. And I was just left to pick up the pieces. The, the, what had happened at the time was we had, and this is, this is a, a classic legacy media organization problem. We had two separate operations. We had Ireland.com, as it was then, happening in a different building with people who worked there providing a breaking news service, different terms and conditions of employment, barely allowed into the mothership to talk to the quote unquote real journalists. Uh, it really wasn't sustainable as a work model. We were looking to integrate more, and we did integrate more in 2008, launched irishtimes.com as it is now. But that was, in a way, was just a first phase of integration, and we've got a number of other significant ones, some of them coming up later this, um, later this year. But for me, coming to it from print, as somebody with an interest in culture and technology and media, admittedly, but still coming from a print background, the two things that really, uh, really struck me as a journalist, and the first one was, uh, the engagement with people who come from a tech background, uh, developers and coders and people who are part of that world. And, uh, and it took me a while to understand this fully, but the really creative way in which journalists, whose job really is to, um, is to make sense of the world, is to find facts and present them in a useful way uh, to our audiences, that we have a shared uh, objective with, with many people who, are, who, are, who work in the world of tech as well. So that even though the, those two communities may seem very different, and even though they think about information very often on, on the face of it in very different ways, the reality is that when you marry these, the, the, those, those two worlds together, you start thinking of really interesting ways, which I, uh, Gavin may talk about a little later on, about, about what information is, what's a story, what's truth, 
Um, how do you tell a story? Uh, and what's the value of that? And what's the value of that into the long term as well? And how do you set up systems that allow people to tell those stories in an ongoing way rather than just a once-off kind of a way? The other thing which um, was a huge change for me coming into my job was the interaction with the audience. Because yes, uh, the Irish Times has historically, has always had a very close relationship with its audience. They do tend to pick up the phone to us all the time and give off about stuff or suggest stuff. And they're, you know, more recently through emails and through letters, the, the letters page is kind of, I think, one of the most, single most important institutions with, you know, within the Irish Times. But the immediacy and the development of relationships that you have through through social media and through interacting with your audience, I think shifted that in a in a in, in quite a fundamental way, and certainly has changed the way in which I think about my job. Um, let me just see how I'm doing on time here. Not well. Um, the um, I'll, I'll I'll skip this after you, and I'll just go on to say that to acknowledge that I think that we've been very slow. As journalists to take advantage of both those 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 areas, both both the opportunities which technology uh, gives us to think uh, in a new way about stories, and also to think in a new way about what our audience is, how we engage with it, and how we draw value from it, and how we make our work better in relation to that. Um, Noreen was 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 talking earlier about about comment, and I'd acknowledge that Independent.ie has comment open for its users on a lot more articles currently than we do on IrishTimes.com, which is something I'm looking forward to address but in a uh, in, in the next few months but in reality the system the traditional system which has grown up over the last 15 years of giving people the opportunity to comment on an article already seems a little bit antiquated and archaic to me when I think of the immediacy and the real interaction that I have particularly through Twitter I think Twitter at the moment is the most useful social media tool to journalists although although that that could change in a matter of months if, if not years that the, the, the comment system where people Many of them anonymous, uh, you know, give give their opinions of varying quality, be it said, at the end of an article, and that the journalist themselves very rarely comes back in to engage with that conversation. Seems to me to be inadequate to the times in which we live and the way in which I do deal with our users of IrishTimes.com every day on Twitter. So in terms of thinking what comment, perhaps the first thing would be to get rid of the word comment, because that implies a sort of a, a one-way process, and to start thinking about having conversations with our community around our content in a way that adds value, both for the community and for the journalists who are also part of that community. And I think we do have an educational process we need to go through. Helen, who's sitting here beside me, has worked with me quite closely over the last few months in terms of exploring what social media and Twitter means for journalists and how we can use it better. Some people think it's kind of ridiculous to be training people or workshopping how to work on Twitter, because Twitter, by its nature, is a, it's a, it's a piece of consumer technology that is incredibly easy to get up and running on. But I think there are specific issues for journalists in how best to engage with social media, and also ethical, ethical questions about what you can and cannot do, what you should and should not do, what your voice should be, how you should behave yourself. The, uh, Susan said earlier, and I completely agree with this, that actually the fundamental principles of good journalism don't change an iota when you come onto these new platforms at all. So that when people are wondering how they should behave or what their voice should be or what's acceptable or not acceptable when they're on Twitter, for example, I say it's exactly the same as if you were on the radio show. Um, in terms of your use of language, what you can say, what you can't say, it's exactly the same as in any other media and I think that's a, that's a, start, that's a starting point on it straight away. I suppose the other, the other point, I read a, a, a very good blog post uh, by Jeff Jarvis who's writes quite a lot of very good blog posts on, on, me, on media issues um, the other day, and he said, um, pardon my bad language, but um, journalists don't know shit about the business which they work in. And that is a real challenge for journalists as we move on, because we need to understand it. Jarvis's argument was that up until now, uh, journalists really didn't need to understand it. You had these large corporate conglomerates um, with vertical distribution and advertising sales, which supported a range of activities, some of which were not directly connected to the commercial, you know, to the commercial revenue model of the institution at all. Uh, but those are crumbling away, and journalists are really going to need to understand what new revenue models are emerging and what does that mean in terms of what work they'll be able to do. Um, Jarvis, Jarvis goes on to say, I know some probably some of my 
commercial colleagues on the commercial side of the Irish Times welcomed his proposition that journalists don't know shit about business. But what Jarvis went on to say, and which I, uh, which I hope they will have read, was that the reason journalists need to know about business is you can't leave it to the idiots on the commercial side of the house, because they probably understand the business even less. Our classic business model was so simple uh, in newspapers. We sold newspapers to people, and we sold advertising in, 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 in those newspapers. Now, both of those are disappearing in front of our eyes. We could have endless arguments and discussions about paying for content or not paying for content, can you replica the, 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 the paying for content uh, newspaper model in the digital space, where's the advertising going, can you get it back from, do, from Google, what's the copyright situation and how can, we, how can we protect the valuable content which we create and put a lot of money into, how can we maintain standards when our revenues are heading south at, you know, at great speed. Those are all true, but in my view that the, the objective uh, is, is relatively simple. Um, how, to, how to achieve it is, an, is another matter, but the objective is we need to rapidly grow our digital revenues because our print revenues are disappearing. And in order to do that, we need to, we, we need to know what's happening with technology, what the social impact of that is, <coughs> and we need to connect with the audience, with the new generation of the audience which we've traditionally had. And that would be my objective as editor of irishtimes.com, is to build and develop that community of people who frankly are never going to buy a print product or perhaps buy one at a weekend, but to actually have those people trust us, come to us on a daily basis, and form part of a community into the future and to create a viable business out of that. Thank you.